The story begins in August of 2016. Our protagonist is Hashiba Kyoya, a 28-year-old man with a never-giving-up attitude who admires the Platinum Generation, a term given to three genius artists around his same age, Kowego Kyoichi, Akashi Mashino, and Nna, pronounced Nana. Now Kyoya, after having quit his office job in order to work at a game developing company, is forced to return to his parents' house after his experience in set company was a failure. Back in his old room, he's seen admiring illustrations of Akashi Mashino, one of the Platinum Three, but is interrupted by a call from his sister, where she tells him that he found his old art school acceptance letter and that she's going to hand it to him later. Kyoya then thinks back to the time when he first received that letter. He actually had gotten accepted to both the economics department of a regular university and the visual arts program of an art school. But due to not having the confidence to try a creative career, he decided to settle for regular college work, which seemed easier to him at the time. Back in the present, with him now regretting that decision, wonders if he could wake up and be back in time so he could change how things went back then, only to fall asleep. Later that day, his sister wakes him up, having arrived to give him the letter. Reluctantly accepting his life choices, he decides to look for a job. One month later, having been just rejected from a job offer, he sees a red-haired girl looking on down from the bridge he's walking on, but confusing the gesture of her removing her shoe with an attempt to jump off of the bridge, he rushes and jumps at her, shoving her to safety. Though out of a coffee shop with the girl he just saved, Kyoe apologizes for the mix-up. She explains to him that she works at a game company and is currently pissed off because a member of their staff ran out on them at a critical time. He offers her his services, having experience in that field. Now at his new job, the red-haired girl reveals to him that she's the head of one of the company's development groups and that her name is Kawasagawa. She begins with tasking him with the simple job of organizing things but ends up pleasantly surprised as he ends up doing a really good job at it. One month later in October of 2016, he's now seen as a vital part of the team. Later that day, he has a drink with Kawasagawa at a bar, with her explaining how some people at the company are against her development group. Sometime later, back at his job, Kawasagawa has an announcement to make to her team. She reveals that the project they've been working on has been frozen by the board of directors. As a result of this, the entire team, including Kyoya, gets laid off. Back in his room, he regrets not having chosen to study in the art school and angrily throws his old letter into the trash. Claiming that it's too late while crying, he ends up falling asleep. In his sleep, he hears his sister's voice, which wakes him up. He sees her in a scholar uniform, confusing him. His sister talks about how he was celebrating earlier, saying that he got into Unaka arts. Kyoe is confused as that happened 10 years ago, but he begins to notice that some of his books are missing. His old television is back in his room, alongside his old generation console, and his smartphone is now a flip phone. He notices the date in the calendar is 2006. He ends up realizing that somehow he's gone back to the world from 10 years ago. The date is now April of 2006. Kyoe has chosen to go to art school this time and has moved in into a shared house. He falls asleep in his new room, but then wakes up in an office room where two debt collectors threaten him, only to notice he's just in a filming set. He's instructed by the director to run off to the light, as his future is up to him. And so he does. Kyoe then wakes up back in his room in the shared house, with it having been just a nightmare. But he finds a blue-haired girl sleeping next to him. The girl wakes up and approaches Kyoya in order to grab his bottle of yogurt. The girl clumsily falls and her head lands on Kyoya's crotch. His new housemates rush in as they heard a noise only to find that scene. She explains that she was sleeping there because her futon hadn't arrived yet. Later that day, they introduce themselves to each other. The blonde girl is Nanako Koger. The other male living with them is Rokuanji Tsuriyuki, and the blue-haired girl is Shinoaki, who they begin calling Shinoaki, much to her disapproval. As they all attend the same university, they all head there together. Now at class, Kyoe ends up sitting next to someone named Hikowa Jinkiro. The assistant professor, Kano, comes in and begins to talk to the students about how the industry they want to work for is hard and that it isn't going to be easy. After the class ended, Kyoe notices a dropped student ID and tries to hand it over to the person who owns it, only to notice that that person is actually Kawasko, her boss from 10 years in the future. Later. At another class, the teacher asks the students to name one of the two elements from writing a script missing on the board. Kawasgawa gives the correct answer. Then she hands over the question to ensleeping Suriyuki, who answers correctly as well, surprising the entire classroom. Later on, Kyoe realizes that despite initially thinking that his 10 extra years would give him an advantage, he still severely lacks fundamental knowledge of what he's studying. Jenkiro approaches him and tells him that he's joined an extracurricular program and advises that both he and Shinoki should join one as well. 
Later that day, after having gone check the extracurricular programs, Kyoya and Shinoki are invited to a mixer, and they both stay there until the night. Shinoki falls asleep on Kyoya's shoulder, as if he decides to carry her on his back to their home. Shinoki wakes up, surprised to see Kyoya carrying her. She tells Kyoya about how sharp and calm he is compared to people his same age, but that he looks too worried sometimes. He talks about how everyone at school has something special, while he doesn't only for Shinoki to say that she thought that he could do anything, and that the people who he thinks are amazing are just as worried as he is. He thanks her for that. Back home, Kyoe goes over to Shinoki's room to hand over her bag, but as he peeks through her door, she sees Shinoki illustrating the same art he was admiring back in 2016, realizing that Shinoki is, in fact, Akashi Mashino, one of the members of the Platinum Generation. Shinoki and Surayuki are having an argument over him having eaten Shinoki's ramen, only for Nanako to barge in, but after realizing that she's only wearing a top, she punches Kyoya out of embarrassment. Now at class, the teacher Kana instructs the students to form groups of four, as they will be making a short film that's supposed to be three minutes long with time being the theme. Later that day, Kyoya explains to Tsuriyuki everyone's roles. He says that he only wants to do the script, but that he's counting on Kyoya. That afternoon, Kyoya and Nanako find out that they have ended up working at the same part-time job. Kyoya asks her why did she enroll in art school, to which she responds that there wasn't any real reason. She then talks to him about the place she used to live in, reminiscing to the time she was at her town's train station, ready to depart to Unaka. She admits that she's there to kind of like find herself. This causes Kyoe to think back to a time where he was defeatedly sitting on the bench of a train station, watching a train pass by. After that, Nanako offers him help in putting a can in the upper part of the shelf, but this makes her obliviously press her against the back of his head and innocently continues until she manages to put it in its place. Now at Kano's office, she asks Kyoya if anything interesting has happened lately that he could use as inspiration for his film, only to be able to think on Nanako's Back home, Kyoya wakes Shinoki up, who had fallen asleep on the table. He asks her why did she enroll in art school, to which she responds that she's never been really good at studying, and that she wanted to find something she could do. She explains to him that when she was younger, there were times she missed the train to school and had to wait half an hour for the next one. Thanks to that, Kyoe comes up with an idea for their short film. Now with everyone at the table, Kyoe explains that he wants the story to take place at a train station, since all of them have experience related to that already. The girls agree, but Suryoki heads back to his room for half an hour, and then comes out with the plot of the story Kyoe proposed written down. Suryuki wants to have a word with Kyoe though, and they both head outside. He confronts him regarding the idea for the project, claiming that he had written the exact same thing in his idea notebook, though he also claims that there's no way Kyoe could have seen it, since it was locked up. Kyoe then remembers he saw the story in a book of short stories he read in the future. Suryuki interrogates him, asking if it's a coincidence, or if it's something else. But he then calms down and apologizes to Kyoe. Some days later, having made progress with the project, they're all now at a coffee shop, where Kyoe asks Suryuki to make some cuts to the script, due to the time limit. Suryuki, not happy about this, complies, but ends up leaving the coffee shop. The rest of them head out, but Nanako ends up stepping on the head of someone on the floor who asks her for help. They help carry him to the fine arts study group room, only to find out it was a trap to have them enroll in it. Out of the three, Nanako and Shinoki end up saying that they want to join. The person introduces himself as Takashi Kiryu, who's in his fifth year of the photography program. Later, Kyoe is checking the train station where they will film. Kawazagawa ends up running into him and finds out that he's going to be filming there as well. Due to this, she aggressively tells him that she will win. Later that day, Kona discusses with Kyoya about the creative differences a team have with the script, claiming that no one outranks anyone involved in the same project. Due to this realization, Kyoya runs back home and apologizes to Suryuki over the incident at the coffee shop. Now at the train station ready to film, they find out that Suryuki, instead of getting a filming camera, got one that only takes photographs. Kyoya claims that they will be able to figure something out. At the school, it's time for the screening of the short film. Kano instructs the students to be clapped if the film is good and to remain quiet if it isn't. After Kawasegawa's film is screened, a theater erupts in applause even with Jin Kiro crying. This makes the team worry about their project, as they say there will be comparisons. Their film begins to be screened, revealing that it is a stop-motion style film, but with photographs. Back to the time when the team found out Suryuki got the wrong camera, Kyoya claims that they can do this, thinking to himself that he's been through rough spots like this already. He makes a call to Kirio, telling him that he'll join the group if he teaches him how to take good photographs. The group plans on how they will film the project and then get to it, 
with Kiryu teaching Kiwea how to take photographs over the phone. The day passes by, and at noon, they finish filming the movie. Back at the classroom, their movie finishes being shown. The entire class remains in silence until Kawasegawa begins to clap, followed by all of the students clapping as well, with even Jinkiro crying again. The entire team is happy and relieved. After that, it's revealed that Kawasegawa's team came in first place, while Kyoei's came in third. The entire team excitedly claims that they could have made a better project if they had the proper equipment and then head back home in good spirits. A bit after, Kawasegawa confronts Kano, asking why didn't Kyoei's team's film get first place as she thought their project was better. She explains that she felt that what they did wasn't intentional, but gives praise to Kyoya over the ability to come up with something like that during a troubled production. She tells Kawasegawa that she wants her working with Kyoya's team for the second semester. Later that day, after Nanako and Kyoya's shift is over, she asks him if he'll go with her to a karaoke booth. He accepts, and now and there, he hears Nanako sing. Kyoya claims to himself that her voice resonates in his chest. After that, she asks him if he'll accompany her to karaoke more often so she can have him hear her singing and tell her what she needs to work on. Kyoya accepts to do so. On their way back, Kyoya tells Manako that they can upload her singing online, but she fiercely refuses. He convinces her by saying that the videos will only be uploaded to a video site exclusive to Japan. That will be created around the end of the year or so. Now at the Fine Arts Study Group room, the members celebrate the end of the semester and properly introduce themselves to each other. The remaining members being Hayama Eureka, who's in her third year of industrial arts, Sujimoto Mikio, who's in his second year of the music program, and Kakara Sho, who's in his third year of theater arts study, majoring in dance. Later, Nanako heads alone to her job, while Kyoya and Shinoki head back home. Shinoki tells Kyoya that she saw him peeking through her door while she was drawing, but that she isn't angry at all. She reveals to him that while she's clumsy at everything else, art is her passion, but it hasn't been enough to make a living, nor she enjoys doing it seriously. She claims that she might give up on art only for Kyoya to hold her by her shoulders and exclaim that she can't stop being an artist. He thinks back to a time when her art was there for him in the future and reveals to her that he loves her art. Surprised by this, she now claims that Kyoya is her goal and that she will create the kind of world he wants to see. Now it's the second semester. The team is at a beach getting ready to shoot their new school project. Kawasagawa and Surayuki are having an argument regarding the script. And after sarcastically claiming that she shouldn't be arguing with him, Suryuki tries to stop her by holding her from her only for it to come undone, making her bra fall off in front of Kyoya, which makes her slap Suryuki. Later that same day, Kawasagawa questions Kyoya regarding the loan of the filming equipment given that first-year students can only have it on loan for a day, but their filming lasts three days. At night, it's revealed that they have both taken over the jobs of senior students in exchange to be able to use their equipment on their days off. While that happens, a pink-haired, childlike adult is listening to the combo and tells Kyoya that in exchange for her not telling on them, he will now owe her a favor. She reveals that her name is Tomioka Kiko, and then proceeds to leave. The following day at school, their team's film has just finished being screened, with the reception being positive. Kawasgawa has her issues with the film though, claiming that something's off. The next film begins to be projected, and the students end up amazed by the acting in this one saying that it's ways better than the one in the previous movie, making Manako sad. At the end of the presentation, Kong announces that Kyoe's team's film got first place, surprising the students, as they felt that the movie with the better acting deserved it. She reveals that the deciding factor was that, in the other movie, they were actually serious about acting. Now at the karaoke booth, the team is celebrating their win. Kawasgawa notices that Nanako is faking being happy about it, though. Jenkiro makes Nanako sing a song, and after performing it, the team gives her a round of applause, stating that it was impressive. After this, Kawasagawa ends up confronting Nanako, making her reveal that her dream isn't actually an act, but to be a singer. Nanako ends up frustrated at this and leaves the booth alone. Later that same day, Kawasagawa and Kyoya are now in a coffee shop. She explains that seeing that Nanako was pretending not to care for a talent she has that really shines made her angry. Claiming that she's worried for her, Kyoya assures her it'll be okay, as they'll figure something out. Later on, at the art group, Kiryu tells Kyoya about the school festival, but Mikio makes him shut up, as he ended up submitting that this year their group will do a maid cafe. As Kiryu claims that he wants the star girl to be a pink-haired girl, Kiko appears out of nowhere, sitting next to Kyoya. She has come to collect the favor he owed her, and asks him if he wants to come work on their game, revealing that she works at Hallucigenia Soft, a big Dujin game company. Kyoya refuses, as he's currently busy. Kiko understands, but leaves some copies of her game behind before leaving. After Kyoya plays one of the games, he comes up with an idea. He tries to talk to Nanako, but she still tells him go to away. 
He then begins playing a recording of her when she was singing. He tells her that he only adjusted the tone a little bit, but that it's ultimately what her voice can sound like. Nanaka opens her door and while crying, thanks Kyoya for this. She now claims that she wants to get better at singing, study, and practice it, for real. At the preparations for the festival, Kyoya is with Nanako. She wonders if she'll be able to sing if she keeps it up. Kyoya tells her that she's finally found something she can get serious about and that that could help her find a goal, which makes Nanako hug and thank him, only to then quickly move away from him afterwards, embarrassed. The next day, the festival has finally begun. Kyoya enters his group's maid cafe only to find Nanako, Shinoki, and even Kiko dressed as maids, though Kiko tells him that she owes him double now. The cafe is a huge success, with the entire team ending up tired due to working all day, two days in a row. The day after, Kawasegawa is seen outside the cafe wanting to apologize to Nanako, but Kyoya tells her that what she said prompted her to begin taking singing seriously. After that, Kyoya spends the day checking out the festival with Shinoiki. They end up at the art exhibition with them both noticing a painting made by Yamashina Kazu. As Kyoya reads the artist's name below, he begins to feel dizzy and passes out. He eventually wakes up on Shinoki's lap, with her claiming that he must be tired from all the work. Shinoki tells him that she was really glad about what he said to her the other day and approaches him for a kiss, but they end up interrupted by a call. Kyoya is told that the closing act of the festival won't show up, so they both head there. They end up deciding to have someone else sting and Kyoya proposes it to be Nanako. Nanako's reaction is negative and rushes out of the tent, with Kyoya running after her. He ends up finding her next to a lake, but Nanako is still against it due to fear of failing. As she claims she can't sing in front of hundreds, Kyoya actually reveals something to her. Back at the concert, Kyoya and Nanako are back, and with Nanako confident this time, steps onto the stage and begins to sing. The audience erupts as they begin to cheer and dance in response to her singing. It's revealed that what Kyoya showed her was that he uploaded a video for singing to the internet, showing her that it got more than 20,000 views after it was only uploaded yesterday, telling her that she already sung in front of thousands of people as she sees the many positive comments. This finally convinces her to go and sing at the concert. After the concert, Nanako rushes back Kyoya but is unable to find him. We see that Shinoki has taken him somewhere else. She steps in front of him and kisses him on the lips, surprising him. As that happens, we see Nanako standing behind a fountain, staring at them in disbelief. Kyoya wakes up in his room with Shinoki on top of him. She closes her eyes and expects him to kiss her. Kyoya approaches her, and just as he's about to kiss her, Nanako goes into his room, but ends up angrily leaving. During breakfast, Shuryuki is told that he's been missing classes lately, to which he responds that he's been working multiple shifts at work, but says that he'll be attending class regularly from next week on. Though he lied as he didn't add in any class the following week. Later, in a morning, Shinoki and Suryuki are seen struggling outside with Shinoki not letting him go to work, claiming that he needs rest and that he isn't fine. After Kyoya took him to a hospital, they both leave, having been told that he's suffering of burnout and sleep deprivation, but Suryuki shrugs it off. After Kyoya insists to hear what's happening with him, Suryuki explains that he comes from a long line of doctors in his family, and since he didn't want to be one, he ended up running away from home, so he now has to pay his own tuition. Kyoya says that there's a way for him to make money on his own. Suryuki responds aggressively at first, but Kyoya tells him that he has a plan. Back at home, he explains to the team that they're going to make a doujin game. He instructs Suryuki to make the script, Shinoki to handle the illustrations, and for Nanako to deal with the background music, with Kyoya being the director. Later that day in a coffee shop, Kyoya meets with Kiko in order to ask her for a big favor, to have the game come out as a new release from Hallucigenia Soft in order for the game to sell, so Suryuki can pay his tuition. She ends up accepting the proposal. Back home, Kyoya tells his housemates that they'll be making a romantic school story, but as he mentions there will be sexy scenes, Suryuki drags him into his room explaining to him that he's still a He tries to convince him that it's fine, but to little avail. Back outside, as Shinoki and Nanako have never played that kind of game before, Kyoya lends them his laptop so they can play a similar game. But after a while, Nanako freaks out and begins hitting Kyoko with a pillow, while Shinoki is oblivious as to what was happening in it. Now at the art school, Kyoe meets up with Yamashina Kazu, the same artist whose painting he saw the other day at the festival. He asks him to handle the backgrounds for his game, to which he accepts. Later at noon, Kyoe is now with Kiko buying hardware. They both notice a mysterious-looking girl in front of a doujinshi store, but they ignore it soon after and leave. The next day at school, Kyoya has explained Suryuki's situation to Kano. As Kiko has explained the deal with the game to her already, she tells him that it will be a good experience for his studies. 
Back home, Suryuki, Nanako, and Shinoki are struggling with their respective duties for the game. The next day, we see them all falling asleep at sculpting class, because they didn't sleep that night. Later, Kawasagawa confronts Kyoya as to what is happening to them, and he explains the situation. She offers her help, and after working on the game for some hours, they finally head back to their homes. Now back at home, Kyoya tells Tsuriyuki that his script needs tweaking, but he decides to delete it. The next day, Shinoki explains how she saw a huge guy and a girl in a fur coat coming out of a black car, prompting Tsuriyuki to interrogate her about it. After confirming his suspicions, he puts on his biking clothes and decides to leave for the day, but as he opens the door, the huge guy she just mentioned appears in front of the door. The girl with the barret shows up and jumps on top of Tsuriyuki. She presents herself as Jishoji Sayuri, claiming to be Tsuriyuki's fiancé. The team is now having lunch with Sayuri, in spite of Tsuriyuki's displeasure. As Sayuri tries to feed Tsuriyuki, Shinoki mimics her and tries to feed Kyoya as well, only for Manako to get jealous and try to do the same. Later, at sports class, Tsuriyuki explains to Kyoka that he and Sayuri are childhood friends, but their parents decided that they'd marry each other without asking him claiming that his feelings are reciprocal. Suguri ended up gradually visiting the house every day as winter vacation eventually began. Suryuki now asks Kyoe to review the new script he's been working on, and is told that it's great. After that, Nanako tells Kyoe that she's having trouble composing. Kyoe checks out a composition she made on her computer, and says that it's good enough, which makes Nanoka hug him from behind. Now in Shinoki's room, Kyoe wonders if Nanako is into him but shrugs it off. He then gets asked by Shinoki, what's happening in a scene where the characters are in suggestive poses. Shinoki then has Kyoya sit on her bed and begins to sketch how he's sitting, very close to him, to then innocently touch his crotch. Kyoya tries to move away, embarrassed, but Shinoki forces him to continue. The next day, Kyoya hands over a copy of some of the game files to Kawasekawa. She tells him that she's seriously impressed at how he got Suryuki to change his writing style for the game. Later, Kyoya accompanies Shinoki to the art store. Out of the blue, Shinoki asks Kyoya if it's okay with it being her, only for her to apologize and say that it was a fun thing to ask. As many years came, the year is now 2007. The team kept on steadily making progress on their game. One day, Kyoya tries to enter Tsuriyuki's room, only to find Sayuri and trying to s*** him while he's writing. After that, Kyoya explains the situation to Shinoki and Nanako, but he gets uncomfortable with them, as them both are sitting right next to him. That same night at work, Nanako asks Kyoya what was he doing all day yesterday in Shinoki's room, and he answers that he was just taking pictures for reference. Nanako has her doubts, but Kyoya sneaks away. Kyoya worries that this will affect the game production as he restocks the cans, only for Nanako to come from behind and help him, but this time, she claims that she's doing it on purpose, which shocks Kyoya. Nanako then leaves, claiming to him that she won't lose. The next day, Kyoya asks Kawasegawa for help on this, so she asks him which one he likes, but he says that he doesn't feel that way about either of them. She gets angry at him for not telling them how he feels, but understands as this would affect the game's development. She ends up advising him to continue pretending to be oblivious until he finishes the project. Now in Suryuki's room, him and Kyoe are talking about the script for the game, as a bored Sayuri watches from behind. Out of the blue, she frantically goes and hugs him from behind and asks him if he's coming home with her today. She tells him that his parents are really worried for him, but this only prompts him to stand up and assure her that his dad would never say that. Sayuri then decides to leave, apologizing. After that day, Sayuri didn't visit the house anymore. The week after that, Kyoe gets stopped by Sayuri and her bodyguard on the street, and she asks him for a moment of his time. She asks him what his relationship with Suryuki is, but Kyoe vehemently denies any kind of intimate relationship. Sayuri asks him if he can make any guarantees for his future, since he doesn't have his family's money. He tells her that he can't make any promises, but that Suryuki chose this path for himself, which is why he supports him. She then asks him to help Suryuki find happiness, and leaves. The team is almost done with the production of the game, but Kyoya admits that they'll need to do cuts in order to make the deadline. As he thinks back to when he failed making a game before, he decides that this time it will be different. Kyoya manages to convince Nanako and Shinaki to do stuff differently, in order to help the game come out in time but at first fails to convince Tsuriyuki to change part of the plot of the game, initially offending him, but in the end, he manages to convince him. The next day in a train, a nervous Nanako is traveling with Kiko and Kyoya to a recording session. It ends up being a success, with Nanako really happy about how it went. Now at Kiryu's house, Kyoya has taken Kawasigawa there, so she can use his computer and help make progress on the game that way. 
Later that day, Shinooki excitedly tells Kyoya that she has the idea of adding an additional art piece to the game that would enhance and scene. Kyoya ponders on it for a bit, but ultimately decides against it, choosing to prioritize the game's release date. Shinooki becomes disappointed at first at this, but then agrees with doing it Kyoya's way. Later that night at 2 a.m., with eight hours left until the delivery date, the entire team is working restlessly on getting the game ready on time. Kawasgawa and Keiko arrive and join in on the team's efforts, as they all keep finding bugs, crashes, and typos. It's now morning time and Kyoya finally hands over the finished game to Keiko. Sometime after that, the game was finally completed, and now the mission was to sell it. Kyoya accompanies Keiko to a game festival, where the game ends up being a massive success. Now back home, the team celebrates the success of the game with some snacks, with everyone thanking Kyoya, saying that they couldn't have done it without him. Now outside, Kyoya and Shinoki are walking on a street, but much like the other time, she out of nowhere asks him if this is really how it ought to be. Kyoya answers that the game was a success, and that they helped Surayuki, making Shinoki say that it's fine in that case and apologizes to him, saying that she'll always believe in him. The next day, Kyoya distributes their share of the game's sale profits, but Surayuki asks to have a word with Kyoya outside. He informs Kyoya that he's dropping out of school, saying that the three of them can split his share. Kyoya gets angry at this, but Suryuki explains that these last experiences have driven home the idea that making a living off of writing will be hard. And also explains that after seeing as Kyoya ended up handling everything regarding the game's development, he felt like he couldn't accomplish anything without him, so he decided he had to leave. After praising Kyoya's person, he tells him that he had a pen name in mind he planned on using if he became a writer. He reveals to him that it was Kaoyo Kyoichi, as in Kyoya is number one. Suryuki leaves. Because of that revelation, Kyoya collapses on the floor, screaming. Right at that moment, Kiko shows up, saying, why did things turn out like this? Kyoya thinks to himself that he interfered with the lives of the Platinum Generation, assuming they were in need, but all he ended up doing was affect Suryuki's future. Kiko then tells him, I wonder what would happen in the future at this rate. After that, Kyoya wakes up in a room, not being able to remember how he got there. A blue-haired kid then bursts through the door, jumping onto the bed, and begins calling him Daddy. She says that her name is Hashiba Maki. Kyoe looks at his phone and sees that he's now in May of 2018 as a grown-up Shinoki enters through the door. Now in 2018, Kyoe is having breakfast with his now wife Shinoki and his daughter Maki. He doesn't have any memory of what happened between 2007 and 2018. He finds out that after graduating from Unaka Arts, he now works at a game company called Attraction Point. He notices Kego Suwabe in his call list, so he calls her, but it doesn't go as planned, as she asks him to come early to the company tomorrow. The next day, Kyoe leaves for work, with both his wife and daughter saying goodbye to him. Now at work, he realizes the environment is a mess. He ends up meeting with Morishita Miki, a fellow co-worker, who takes him to Kala Skogawa's office. She instructs him to go with Miki to try to get a hold of Minori Sekawa, a very popular illustrator who goes by the pseudonym Minori Ayaka was currently working for a project the company has staked its entire future on, since she hasn't been able to present her work in time. Now at her apartment, after having met her, she tells Kyoya that there's nothing she wants to draw anymore. Kyoya notices a drawing of hers, claiming that it's wonderful. Ayaka gets excited over this, and tells him that she's been using a style closer to what she started out with, claiming that this is the style of an artist she used to idolize. As she claims she's more motivated now, Kyoya becomes glad that things ended up working out. At night, back at home, Kyoya has dinner with his family. He tells Shinoaki that he met with Minori Ayaka today, but she claims that she doesn't know who she is. And after asking her if she's applied to a festival that is taking art submissions, she tells him that she hasn't drawn in years, which shocks Kyoya. She tells him that there was nothing she wanted to draw anymore, and he ends up in disbelief to this. The next day, at Attraction Point, the president of the company demands Kyoya to actually convince Ayaka to get back to work, as she hasn't presented her illustrations yet, he then has lunch with Kawasagawa at park. Kyoe thinks to himself how Shinoki gave up on being Ekishima Shino to become his wife, and that Kawasagawa used to be more successful in his previous life. After lunch, he tries to look up the Platinum Generation on the internet, only to find out N that NA only has 1,063 followers this time, with her final video being her saying that this will be her last stream, for she doesn't know what she's singing for anymore. And after searching Suryuki up, he notices that he hasn't written any novels, in turn making Kawego Kyoichi not exist. Now outside at night, a drunk Kyoya stumbles onto a pile of trash, heartbroken that he has taken away the dreams of his friends by remaking his life. Back home, he apologizes to Shinoaki, claiming that it's his fault. 
Later that same night, Shinoki confesses to him that the reason she stopped drawing was because, as they kept on making games, she felt she wasn't sure if what she was doing was art anymore. Kyoe thinks back to the time when she asked him to add an additional art piece to the game they were developing and wonders if by telling her no that time, it turned into a pattern afterwards. She claims it became less and less fun to draw, but says that it wasn't Kyoe's fault. She also reveals to him that even if she wasn't satisfied nor knew what she was doing with her art, it always ended up being praised by him and others. Kyoya and his family are having breakfast. He claims to himself that he has to live as best as he can in this world to make sure Shinoki's sacrifice wasn't in vain and carefully to prevent repeating the same mistake. Later, at work, Kyoya has gotten the grasp of his work now, having been one month since he came to the future. Though Kawasagawa and Kyoya work in the same group, it's split in four teams each working in different games with Kawasgawa, who, on top of being in charge of Team A, is also the chief of the group, while Kyoya is in charge of Team B. Back home, Maki throws a fit after Kyoya doesn't want to play with her right now. Shinoki gets mad at her, but manages to calm her down. Back at work, Kyoya watches as a frustrated team listens to the president, telling them that they must ensure the game gets released on time. Kyoya is told that the development of that game has been plagued with setbacks, on top of working overnight often. After that, Miki asks him for help in getting a hold of Ayaka again, who's now having doubts if she'll make the deadline. Now in her building, she lets them in thinking it's the delivery man, only to have them see her dress in gothic fashion, much to her embarrassment. Now inside, she tells them that she hasn't been able to motivate herself. Kyoe asks her if she could take a look at the work of the artist she mentioned she idolized, but she refuses, so they leave. As Kyoe walks with Miki, they talk about how there might be something that will trigger Ayaka's ability to draw again. The next day, back at work, the president is seen yelling at Kawasagawa due to Ayaka's character designs not arriving in time. On top of everything being delayed and working overtime, they also are forced to develop the game in an unstable engine, at the one-month deadline. As she looks defeated, Kyoe tries to cheer her up and remind her of who she is, to little avail. Later, Kyoe tries to tell the president of the company that they have to delay the game, otherwise it will be a disaster. But he rejects his demands, telling him not to meddle where he isn't needed. Thanks to this, Kyoe thinks about how meddling with the past affected the life of his friends for the worse, so he decides not to act on anything anymore. The month after, the game launched on schedule and was met with a very negative reception due to bugs, controversies, and many other things. Now at Kyoe's residence, Maki asks her mom to draw a horse, but she refuses, saying that she's not a very good artist. Kyoe draws it instead, but he's told it sucks. He then gets a call from Miki, who asks him to come to the company quickly. She explains that the game's situation is an absolute mess. They both come in to find the president yelling at Kawasegawa again. Miki tries to have Kyoya do something, but he refuses. He goes to his computer, but notices that Anna N.A. has uploaded a new video. In it, she talks about how, after the guy who told her to sing in college left, she blamed on him the fact that she began slacking, as she only relied on him and wanted to give up. But then, she declares that she doesn't want to be the one who invalidates everything he did, which is why she's going to be singing more. This inspires Kyoe to stand up to the president. Kyoe decides to come forth against the president. After approaching him, Kyoe asks him if it's fine if he handles the response to which he agrees. He first has the game engine changed, then instructs Miki to handle the company's response as she has more tact towards people. He tells Team A that they have two weeks to check the systems, instructs them to give the players 10 times the amount of apology gems they usually give, and finally gives the entire team the next two days off. The president, after having tried to turn down every single instruction Kyoya gave them, finally grabs him by his jacket, frustrated at his final order, but Kyoya fiercely talks back at him, prompting him to release him in shock. He convinces him to trust him, explaining to him that since the game has given the worst possible first impression, they need to do everything possible to have people come back and play it. He finally complies and leaves. After that, in his office, Kyoya gives him a guarantee in exchange for his understanding, with it being having Ayaka turn in her illustrations. Later, Kyoya meets up with her in her apartment and shows her the illustration package for Harusora, the game he developed with his friends years ago in an effort to have her get inspired again. He succeeds at it as she agrees to finally work on the illustrations, claiming that she actually wants to draw again. Sometime later at work, the game has recovered from the very poor receivement it had with everything going well now. Vegomiki informs Kyoya that Kawasegawa is taking a flight to Okinawa, which makes her rush to the airport in an effort to stop her. In the taxi, Kyoe regrets having intervened as he took over a situation where Kawasegawa was in charge, diminishing her importance. Now at the airport, Kyoe finds Kawasegawa. She says that she had already changed her mind and that she canceled her flight. 
He explains to her that he felt that every time he tried to help someone, he only ended up helping himself, all the while making the others miserable. Koweskawa begins to hit in with her bag, demanding to know why he never asked for help. She tells him that he isn't responsible for any of their choices, that he's always tried to help other people so they'd be able to make something. She begins to praise his qualities and ends up saying that that's why she loves him and why she looks up to him. Though she ultimately tells him to forget about those last two parts. She tells him that if she ever found herself back in time when he was suffering, she would have done whatever it took to help him. She ends up deciding to go to Okinawa, but tells him not to worry, as she'll come back. As he watches her plane leave, he wishes he could go back to the old days. Kiko shows up in front of him, exclaiming that she figures it was about time for that. Kyoya welcomes Kiko with a smile. She asks him if he's really sure he wants to go back to the past, as he has a happy life right now. He tells her that he wants to go back to the past to be with everyone. Kiko is then about to send him back, but he stops her, explaining that there's someone he has to say goodbye to. He goes back home and is received by his daughter, who shows him a drawing Shinoki just made to his surprise. She says that after looking at Ayaka's art in the game his company developed, it made her want to try drawing. Kyoya then hugs his family. At night, now is his bed with his wife and daughter, Shinoki tells him that she wants to make art again. The next morning, they all enjoyed breakfast together. Kyoya then heads out to work with Shinoki and Maki saying goodbye to him. He hugs them both and thanks them. Now outside, Kiko is seen waiting for him. She tells him that he isn't either a cheater nor a hero for meddling with the past. He admits that he thought that by using this power, he could be like their savior. But he admits that in the end, it was just his ego talking. Exclaiming that he's now going to trust others, believe in himself, and give it his all, Kiko proceeds to send him back to the past. Kyoya wakes up back as his younger self with Nanako watching him, glad that he woke up at last as she says that he collapsed out front. After that, Nanako explains to him that Suryuka explained the situation to them already and that he said goodbye to them. Kyoya tells them that he'll go out for a bit, but assures them he's not going anywhere anymore. Back at the place where he last saw Suryuki, he exclaims that this is where their remake truly starts. The next day at the fine arts study group, Kyoya thinks about how everything is back to normal, but that Suryuki is still gone. That noon, he has a chat with Kano regarding Suryuki. Kyoya claims that he won't give up on finding him. The next day, Nanako asks Kyoya if he'd help her with a job offer she's received, but he refuses, knowing that Nanako has to begin to do stuff on her own. Though, his rejection makes Nanako beat him up with her bag. Back home, Shinoki is now keeping her distance from drawing, leaving Kyoya in a wonder as to what he can do. The next day, Kyoya ends up colliding with a girl who was running on the street. He notices that the name in her ID card reads Minori Sekawa, the real name of Minori Ayaka, the illustrator he met in the future. The girl runs off to class right after that. At the school, he finds and approaches the young Ayaka, with the intention of creating an opportunity for Shinoki and to give the future of Ayaka some hope. Though if he doesn't know if they'll work out for the best or not, he claims to have plenty of motivation after his experience in 2017. And as he opens a closet with many post-its, he exclaims that his remake has only just begun. Some time later, he's now taking coffee with Kawasgawa at a shop and asks her if he'd help him if he were in a lot of trouble to which she replies that she would offer her help if he really needed. Sometime later, Suryuki is seen leaving a theater, only for him to find Kyoya outside waiting for him. The